Hello everyone, it's Matthew Miller, aka Palm Solo from the CDNet's Mobile Gadgeteer and the Mobile Tech Roundup Podcast with Kevin Tofel. So, I've been using the Google Pixel Slate in the i5 configuration along with most of your viewer for about a month. And that's the 999 model that we were all sent to evaluate. After using it for a month, I loved it, especially with the bridge G-type keyboard. So I sold my uh, Pixelbook. I bought my own Pixel Slate, but I bought the Core M3 version. And this one hasn't been shown by very many people because nobody got it for review. So I wanted to kind of do a little comparison of performance between the i5 and the M3 model. And we just saw yesterday a video from Marquez, MKBHD, where he had the, unfortunately, the 599 Celeron version. And he loved the hardware, but you could see some serious lag in performance of the Celeron model. I don't know if that's because it had the 4 gig of RAM or the 8 gig of RAM, but maybe the Celeron model well, definitely the Celeron model isn't the one to buy for most people, especially those that are watching this video. Now, maybe it's okay if you're just going to have a couple of tabs open and that kind of thing. But the thing is about the past of these Google Pixels, the Pixelbooks, the Chromebook Pixels, they were always the high end of the Chromebook market. So for Google to release a 599 one with a Celeron, maybe not the best strategy. But anyway, this is about the M3 versus the i5. Now I've got two Pixel Slates here in front of me. I'm going to show and walk around through some of the uh, multitasking, some of the apps, some of the zooming, that kind of thing, kind of show you some of the performance aspects of it. I won't tell you which one I'm using at the time, and I'll run through both, and then I'll tell you at the end if the first or second was the M3 and i5 version. So here's one of them, first subject. And as you can see, I have uh, six uh, either settings, uh, Chrome tabs, uh, the Play Store, six things running at the same time, right? But I'm gonna go ahead and start off over here, see if I can tap on the backside, with the App Launcher, and just kind of show you some of the animations and scrolling, uh, that kind of behavior of this particular device. So this is the App Launcher here, have my different apps set up, go back to multitasking. So here's six things, different objects, apps, that kind of thing. If I, as you can see, as I go to right or left, I can make it do a split screen mode or just move that around in the multitasking interface. Um, let's go to, let's see what websites I have here. Uh, let's go to, this is The Verge. I'll go back to the home screen of The Verge and kind of scroll through. This one has some ads, a lot of graphics, content in there as well. Uh, just showing you what that looks like scrolling on this version. Let's go ahead to portrait mode. There's a little bit of a switch, but it's actually pretty fast switching between portrait and landscape. And say I uh, was found, found an article I wanted to read, I tap on the article, uh, reading through the article, and I want to zoom in a little bit, right? I want some bigger text. As you can see, pinch to zoom works pretty flawlessly, not a bad experience at all. And go back to the multitasking. Uh, I think I have the New York Times somewhere. There's New York Times, again, another uh, content and media heavy website. I'll kind of scroll through that, show you that. Let's go back into landscape, back to multitasking. Uh, so this is a Twitter. Uh, this is actually a web app. Um, Kevin Tofel showed me this. There's in the top of the Chrome browser, there's three little dots. You can go in there and create web apps from different websites. And in my opinion, this is better than the Google Play Store app. It actually has takes pretty good advantage of the screen. As you can see, as you jump in here, um, scroll around, you see there's two columns, right? There's kind of a split column format. To me, this is better than the website and better than the Android app. So that's kind of Twitter, scrolling up and down. Go back to the multitasking here. Uh, there's a Google Play Store. If you want to install an app, you just tap install, it goes no problem. There you go, it starts to install an app. I'll have to move that later. Uh, Spotify, this is the web player. Uh, speakers sound fantastic on this device. It's a nice experience. Um, settings, of course, right there. So that's kind of a look at the multitasking, some of the zooming, um, that kind of thing. I don't know what else I'll show on there. I think that's about it. There's a notification came in, just swipe it away. So that's one of the devices. Take a look there. Let me go ahead and grab the other one. Unlock it with my fingerprint, which is a nice feature on top. Okay, let's go back and here we go. Here's the, the six apps again. Again, if I'm the multitasker, oh, sorry. Let's go to the app launcher. Sorry for my reach. 
Here's the app launcher on this one. Mostly the same apps as well. Go back to the multitasking view. Okay, and I think I started with The Verge and I, I moved on to Mobile Gadgeteer. So let me go back a couple websites here. Or right, there it is on this side. That's New York Times, sorry about that. Let me see, I thought I had The Verge up. And it, oh, there we go. Go back to the home screen of The Verge. Okay, you can see the performance in this one. There's the home screen of The Verge, scrolling up and down through the website. Let's go ahead and flip to portrait mode. See how that takes. There we go again with The Verge. And then, let's open up that same website. We're gonna read it, we're gonna zoom in. I wanna read the text a little bit better, zoom in and zoom out. Kind of show you that animation. I think I have the New York Times here. There we go, the New York Times as well. And then go back to the multitasking. Flip back and down over here. There we go. There's that Twitter app again. Tap on the home screen. Home button, sorry about that. There we go, you can see over here there's trends for me. There's my feed. Go back to multitasking. Spotify again, ready to go. Let's see what music I have queued up. It's pretty loud. <laughs> uh, I think that's about it. There's settings again. And that's pretty much it. Let's see if I opened up something, say, uh, say my Todoist. This is a Android app. See, it doesn't take too long to open up apps on it as well. So, which one is which? This one I'm holding in my hand is the Core M3 version. The first one that I showed was the Core i5 version. So as you can see, I can't really see any leg in performance in my daily use. Now, I rarely have this many in my multitasker because I use Chrome for most everything and have multiple Chrome tabs. So I have one Chrome browser with multiple tabs open, usually 15 to 20 tabs with no leg and performance or anything else. It's not often I have this many apps uh, running at the same time. So in my opinion, you can save $200 with the M3, buy yourself a G-Type, uh, or a Bridge G-Type keyboard, and still come out less than paying what you did for the i5 version. For most people, the M3 is probably perfectly adequate. As uh, Marquez showed, probably avoid the Celeron version, but $799, not bad, a little bit less than the iPad Pro. And the nice thing I like about it is I get a full desktop web browser and doesn't limit me at anything I do in the web. So that's a quick look at the Core M3 versus the i5 version. Hope you enjoyed it. Thanks.